Hi friends, welcome back to our Read Aloud. Today's story is based on a true story and I'm going to be using the Novel Effect app to add sound effects as I read along with our story. And our story today is called Emmanuel's Dream. And it is the true story of Emmanuel Ofosu Yaboa. It's written by Laurie Ann Thompson and illustrated by Sean Qual. And this story actually takes place in a country called Ghana in the continent of Africa, specifically West Africa. So I think the best way I can explain this story is through the summary that is on the inside of the cover. It says, in Ghana, West Africa, a baby boy was born. Two bright eyes blinked in the light, two tiny fists opened and closed but only one strong leg. Here is the inspiring true story of Emmanuel Afosu Yaboa, who cycled an incredible 400 miles across Ghana with only one strong leg to spread his powerful message. Disability does not mean inability. So let's get started with our story. Emmanuel's Dream And here is Ghana in West Africa In Ghana, West Africa, a baby boy was born Two bright eyes blinked in the light Two healthy lungs let out a powerful cry Two tiny fists opened and closed, but only one strong leg kicked. Most people thought he would be useless, or worse, a curse. His father left, never to return. But his mother had faith. Her name was Comfort, and she named her first child Emmanuel meaning God is with us. As Emmanuel grew, Mama Comfort told him he could have anything, but we, he would have to get it for himself. He learned to crawl and hop, to fetch water and climb coconut trees. He even shined shoes to earn money. So here is his weak leg and his strong leg. Most kids with disabilities couldn't go to school. Still, Emmanuel's mother carried him there until one day she said, you are too heavy. From then on, Emmanuel hopped to school and back two miles each way on one leg by himself. Wow, that's incredible. That is so difficult and very tiring. At first, nobody would play with him. So Emmanuel saved his money and bought something none of his classmates had. A brand new soccer ball. Of course he would share it, if he could play too. Lunging and spinning on crutches his grandmother had found for him and kicking the ball with his good left foot Emmanuel earned their respect. So even though he had a strong and a weak leg, he still played soccer. His new friends sometimes used their lunch money to rent bikes. Would Emmanuel be able to join them? His good friend Godwin pushed him back so he could balance. Over and over again, Emmanuel fell hard, but finally, he rode. When Emmanuel was 13, Mama Comfort got very sick. She could no longer sell vegetables at the market and Emmanuel's sister and brother were too little to work. He would have to support them. Against his mother's wishes, Emmanuel snuck out and boarded a midnight train to the bustling city of Accra, 
and 150 miles away alone. He didn't know it then, but it would be two years before he saw his family again. So he's going to the city to get work so he can afford to support his family. Emmanuel arrived full of hope. There were so many people, but no one would hire him. Shopkeepers and restaurant owners told him to go out and beg like other disabled people did. Emmanuel refused. Finally, a food stand owner offered him a job and a place to live. So they didn't want to hire him because he was disabled. But he finally got a job. When Emmanuel wasn't serving drink, he kept busy shining shoes. He earned money and sent it home. One morning, when Emmanuel went to buy shoe shining supplies, the shopkeeper thought he was there to he was there to beg and scolded him. Insulted, Emmanuel slammed his money down on the counter. The shopkeeper apologized, but Emmanuel would never forget. When Mama Comfort grew sicker, Emmanuel went home to be with her. From her bed on Christmas Eve, she told her son, Be respectful, take care of your family, don't ever beg and don't give up. By the next morning, Emmanuel's beloved mother was dead. He was heartbroken, but he knew her last words had been a gift. He would honor them by showing everyone that being disabled does not mean being unable. It was a big dream, but Emmanuel had a plan. Emmanuel had a sharp mind a bold heart and one strong leg. All he needed was a bite. At first, no one would help. They thought his plan to bicycle around Ghana was impossible. Then Emmanuel wrote to the Challenged Athletes Foundation all the way in San Diego, California. They sent him a bike, plus a helmet, shorts, socks, and gloves. So someone help him. Emmanuel started training for the long ride. He persuaded the king of his region to give him a royal blessing. Here he is giving him a royal blessing. So they city of Accra. He pedaled through on the highway. Wild animals stopped his thoughts. He pedaled through vast grassland and into the ancient city of Tamale. He rode up, down, across, and around his country, proudly wearing the colors of his flag on a shirt printed with the words, the pozo, or the disabled person. The pozo, and here he goes, biking around. He's doing this to raise support and awareness for people with disabilities. Along the way, Emmanuel talked to those with physical challenges and those without, to poor farm workers and wealthy landowners, to religious leaders, government officials, and reporters. He wanted everyone to see him and his disability. He wanted everyone to hear him and his message. The farther Emmanuel rode, the more attention he got 
Children cheered. Able-bodied adults ran or rode along with him. People with disabilities left their homes and came outside, some for the very first time. The young man, once thought of as a curse, was becoming a national hero. He completed his astounding journey, pedaling south to the sea and back up to Accra, nearly 400 miles in just 10 days. But Emmanuel's success goes even farther than that. He proved that one leg is enough to do great things, and one person is enough to change the world. And here's a quote by Emmanuel, and it says, in this world, we are not perfect. We can only do our best. The end. One person can change the world. What an incredibly inspiring story. Emmanuel's life was not easy, but he worked very hard to make his message be heard around the world. When he first started out, you can see he has his weak leg and his strong leg. And imagine trying to ride a bike with only one strong leg. That's very hard. You need the momentum from both of those legs to pedal, so he practiced and practiced until he finally could ride a bike. And it started out with, here is a picture of his father and his mother, and they look sad, and his father looked disappointed. And if you remember, he left them. And the reason being is because in Ghana and West Africa, if a child has a disability, they think that that person is useless or a curse. So his father was so ashamed that he left them. That must have been incredibly hard and painful to um, accept and deal with. But Emmanuel worked hard his whole life because he wanted to persevere and show that I can do great things even though I'm considered disabled, right? His message is disability does not mean inability. So he spread that message by bicycling uh, or by cycling or all across West Ghana or Accra in Ghana. And he wanted to share that message to kind of inspire hope in other people to show them if I can do it, you can do it too. And he worked very hard and he cycled 400 miles and only in 10 days. That's pretty impressive, even for an able-bodied person to do that, so someone who has the use of both their legs, that's still incredibly challenging. So I've actually included in um, the description of this video and in my Google slide, a link to a video that shows actual footage of Emmanuel during his ride across uh, West Africa, or Ghana in um, West Africa, and it shows him riding his bike and doing his 400 mile journey. So if you want to kind of see a little bit more about his story, I encourage you to take a watch of the video or take a look at the video. It's only a couple minutes long. And I hope you guys enjoyed that story. I hope you enjoyed um, the sound effects that went along with it. And just remember that even if you feel that you are not capable or if maybe you are a disabled person, you can do great things. It takes only one person to make a change in the world. So just like Emmanuel who worked hard, he was able to spread that message, just one person, and he worked hard to do that. So I encourage you all to be brave just like Emmanuel and to work hard just like Emmanuel, even when things get difficult in your life. You have to persevere and keep going. Okay, I hope you guys enjoy your weekend and I will be back for a new read aloud on Monday. Bye everybody.